Let's face it, dating in the modern day sucks. Using dating apps is generally a terrible experience. Going on dates over and over again can begin to feel repetitious and even discouraging over time. Whether you're currently trying to find the right person to see more than once, or you just started seeing someone new and you're unsure about where it'll go, this video has your back. Because today I'm going to answer the question of are they avoidant or are they just not interested? Hello, my name is Charlie and welcome to my channel where I talk about all things attack attachment styles. As someone that's become secure and healed their fearful avoidance attachment style, I understand how difficult dating can be regardless of your attachment style. Not even just talking about attachment styles in the mix, but just dating in general. It's a really negative experience today. For those that are new to my content, I'm literally just a guy that's done the healing work and helps others navigate dating and breakups. I personally don't identify as a coach and I don't even have a course or a program to sell you. People just sometimes book calls with me to ask me their most pressing questions. One of the most common questions I get is, are they avoidant or are they just simply not interested in me? So let's get into that. First up, let's just run through what avoidant attachment is. Given that avoidant attachment can show up in dating, it's often really simple to overlook and mistake it for just simply not being interested. But let me stop you right there because there's a lot of nuance when attachment styles are involved. You see, attachment styles exist on a spectrum and they can be different from person to person and relationships relationship to relationships. So generally speaking, here are the signs of an avoidant attachment style. So for people with avoidant attachment, inconsistent communication can be a common theme that shows up again and again. They may show interest with you and engage in conversation, but they may pull back and then become distant. They may not always be the ones to initiate contact first, but typically they can respond sometimes relatively quickly when you do reach out to them. Another big sign you see for avoidance is that they can sometimes struggle with keeping the conversation going. If they're not naturally charismatic or outgoing or a social butterfly, they may actually struggle here. One of the most prevalent core wounds of an avoidant attachment style is the fear of intimacy, and because of this, they may avoid or deflect deep and emotional conversations, especially early on in getting to know each other. They, as people, might be uncomfortable with closeness and they keep relationships at a distance. So this can mean that they're not the most physically affectionate or emotionally affectionate people, especially in the earliest stages of dating because they're still trying to figure out whether or not they can fully trust you. Another common sign of an avoidant attachment style is their need for space. You might find as people, they need a lot of time alone, whether it's to engage in their hobbies or to just socially recharge they may start to feel uncomfortable if there's too much togetherness or if the relationship is taking up a great part of their time. And this is usually one of the first areas you see that avoidance can fiercely set boundaries. They can be very rigid in that sense, and it can often cause a lot of conflict and frustration in relationships because there's not as much flexibility in this area. And thinking back when I had dated a few avoidant-leaning women, they were very clear and upfront from the beginning about how they only wanted to see each other for a set amount of hours during the week or maybe on specific days because they really did need their time to recharge from work. Some of them had their own side businesses and they really sought those out as creature comforts to recharge socially and emotionally through the week. But it was also one of those strategies they used to maintain emotional distance in the relationship so that they didn't feel suffocated. Which leads me to one of the other common signs of an avoidant attachment style that can be very frustrating, both for the avoidance themselves, but also the people that pursue relationships with them, and that is sometimes their reluctance to commit to a relationship. They might avoid making plans with you, both in the near future and far future, and they may even avoid talking about what a relationship could be like. And you'll typically find that somebody who is relying heavily on their avoidant attachment to kind of go through dating is that they'll very often have short-term relationships most recently as well. Now, those are the four most common signs I've seen in dating that can be misinterpreted for signs of them not being interested. But keep in mind, even though those signs 
clients can be related to an avoidant attachment style, it doesn't necessarily mean they're related to a lack of effort on their part. It's really easy to view avoidant attachment in this way when looking at simple lists like this, but lists often miss the nuance and spectrum that are associated with attachment styles. So let's review some of the signs that are associated with someone who is just simply not interested in pursuing a serious romantic connection with you to help you better understand the difference between that and avoidant attachment. Sign number one, a consistent lack of engagement. And I'll say it again, a consistent lack of engagement. This is when they rarely initiate contact on their own or even respond to your messages. They may even take a very long time to respond to your messages, and their replies are often short and uninteresting in nature. They're often really boring, and it can be really difficult to foster a conversation with this type of person. Notice how this differs from the first sign of inconsistent communication that is often associated with avoidant attachment. Inconsistent communication implies that there are times when avoidants are all in and they're giving you effort, energy, and time to really foster some sort of conversation and communication with you. Whereas someone who is completely not interested in you doesn't even make this effort at all, which leads me to the second sign, and that is they make no effort. They show little or no interest at all in making plans or spending time together, and they may even cancel or flake on plans to avoid spending time with you at all. However, for those avoidants who have an element of people-pleasing in their attachment, will still make an effort to set plans and spend time with you. Someone disinterested in you won't even talk about setting plans with you. They won't even bring it up themselves. And if you try to bring it up first, they'll give you some excuse as to why they're unavailable, and they won't even offer alternative dates or times for when they can meet up with you. That is someone who truly does not want to spend any time with you at all. Whereas avoidance, if they want to spend time with you, they're going to try and find another way to spend time with you because they actually want to be with you. And this is one of the ways in which avoidance can be very collaborative in setting dates and plans because sometimes it does go unmissed that they do offer alternative times and suggestions as to when they can see you. Which leads me to sign number three, because someone that is disinterested in you will put in minimal effort in general. Someone that is not interested in you will not make effort to impress you or show you that they care about you because they are not interested in improving the relationship or quite simply making it work. Many who have dated avoidance will attest to them at one point making great effort to be present with you, impressing you, but also showing other ways in which they care about you. Despite them experiencing internal and external conflict in relationships, some avoidance will still make a great effort as long as they feel cherished and respected in those relationships. Someone that is disinterested in you doesn't care about those factors and very often makes little effort from the very beginning. And sign number four, the relationship or the connection lacks depth. Someone that is not interested in you isn't going to ask questions about you. They're not going to want to know about your ambitions, your dreams, your goals, your hobbies, or what you want out of life because Frankly, they just don't care. They don't care about you as a person. Avoidance, when they're interested in you, want to know all of these things, partly because it does feed into the limerence that can be experienced during the honeymoon phase, but also because they want to know you as a person. They want to know you deep down on the inside. Someone that is not interested in you will not be motivated to foster limerence because there's no limerence to be fostered in the first place. Now, it is entirely possible for someone to be avoidant and not interested in you, but it is also important to consider that attachment styles only explain one side of a person. People have other facets to them like cognitive distortions and personal biases that all inform their attraction and interest levels toward other people. Someone may simply not be interested in you because you remind them of someone else in life that they dislike, and that is entirely out of your control. And it doesn't necessarily mean that their disinterest in you is related to their attachment style or their core wounds or anything like that. I understand why this question comes up a lot. 
I'm sure there are many people watching this video who want to understand why someone they have a crush on or they're interested in or they've been talking to has become cold, dark, and distant. While I enjoy rationalizing and explaining someone's behavior, we should not let it distract us from the present facts. This person in question is not putting an effort to foster a connection with you, which is possibly causing you to rationalize your current situation to make sense of it. It's important if this is your present situation to focus less on the why and more on the how. How does this situation leave you feeling? How are you going to move forward now that you have enough information about the other person's interest in you? And how would you deal with this situation differently if it were to happen to you again? Not many people realize this, but rationalizing your present situations can be a form of emotional avoidance. If you can understand what you're experiencing on an intellectual level, you can inadvertently avoid experiencing it on an emotional level. And this is one of the ways all insecure attachment styles are very similar to one another. It's one of the things that unites all of them because many times they're stuck in their head, often avoiding some of their deepest core feelings that can give them the most clarity that no one else could ever possibly give them. By focusing on the why, we are disconnected from ourselves emotionally, which can prevent us from seeing this other person's lack of interest as unattractive and reasonable grounds for redirecting our effort and energy elsewhere. Now, this may come as a shock to some of my followers and viewers, but I personally believe that it is important to not lean on pathologizing people based on attachment styles and focus purely on their words and actions you'll have a lot less frustration and confusion if you do. So if you've made it this far, then thank you for watching my video. If you got some value out of it, then feel free to hit the like button. And if you want to connect with me, you can book a one-on-one -on -one session using the links in the description. As I said, I'm just a guy. I'm not a coach or a therapist. I don't have anything to sell you beyond booking a session with me. I just have value, insight, and wisdom to share with people that I picked up through my difficult journey with no contact and attachment healing, which can hopefully help you lead a better life. Lastly, you can check out these videos if you want to learn more about my experience with no contact and attachment styles. Until next time, happy healing.